This video is for you if you want to learn super secret training methods of the pros at zero cost and zero added time to your already busy schedules. Yes, we're going to talk about all things breathing, uh, how professionals breathe on the bike and in their workouts. Um, but we're also going to introduce the concept of just your daily life breathing, how you should breathe in your daily life. Now, when I work with athletes, um, especially as a nutritionist, one of the things that we go through is that we go through several types of breathing that can hack your lifestyle from, you know, types of breathing that you can do while you're laying in bed at night, going to sleep to when you wake up first thing in the morning and then throughout the day, if you're feeling stressed, we talk a lot about breathing in my nutritional practice and my coaching endurance athletes practice. We talk about all that, of course, but we also add a couple layers of, um, uh, additional ways to maximize your time on the bike uh, to make you a better athlete, uh, whether you're my ru a runner, um, a swimmer, or even a uh, you know a cyclist. First, you got to read James Nestor's book Breathe. This is one of the most amazing foundational books that every athlete should read. How this guy wrote a book that's actually a page turner. On breathing, uh, it, it, it's amazing. Uh, it goes through the history of breathing. It talks about how we as modern day Western society, modern day Americans are not breathing correctly, how and why we got off schedule and how we're just not breathing today, how we should breathe. Uh, but this is an amazing book. Everybody has to read this book. So before we jump into the actual workouts and stuff, let's just look at breathing as such. So obviously you can breathe in your nose. You can breathe completely in and out of your mouth, in and out of your nose. What is good for you? Well, I'm an advocate. This book is an advocate for nasal breathing in your daily life. That means you're just breathing in and out of your nose. Well, why? Well, filtration. The nasal passages filter out dust, allergens, and other airborne particles, reducing the risk of respiratory infections. Humidification. The air is humidified as it passes through the nasal passages, which helps to protect the lungs and airways from irritation. Vasodilation. Breathing through the nose helps produce nitric oxide, a gas that enhances blood flow by dilating blood vessels. This can improve circulation and lower blood pressure. So all of this is absolutely key. So, you know, nasal breathing, you know, nature gave us two ways to breathe. When you're just at rest, when you're working at home, when you're at your office, when you're at the grocery store, when you're doing just light activity, it's best to learn to breathe in and out your nose. And every once in a while, you'll see athletes wear those nasal strips. I don't really wear those nasal strips in working out, but what I will do is just sitting in my home is I will put one of those nasal strips on while I'm working throughout the day just to remind me to breathe in and out my nose. And the mood is incredible. When you oxygenate those cells throughout the day, your mood increases, just life gets better. Never forget, right? Uh, it, it takes more energy, more oxygen to be in a healthy, happy state than it does to be in a depressed state. So one of the things that I always advocate to anybody that comes to me uh, as an athlete, one of the things that we want to work on is your nasal breathing throughout the day. You will become a more efficient human being. Never forget, right? We're bringing all this stuff in every day. We're bringing in food. We're bringing in water. We're bringing in air. And what we want to do as athletes is create the process, create the habits that cost zero time, that cost zero money to make us that much more of an efficient human being. We're taking in the food. We want to use that food efficiently. So we do a lot of things as uh, nutritionists and coaches. We want, you know, timing of our food intake. Uh, you know, all that great stuff. Uh, hydration, we want all of that. And then um, nasal breathing, we want you to take that air that you're 
bring it into your body and use it the most efficiently way possible. This is a way for some major gains. Now, for athletes, how does this all translate to working out? Well, increase your lung capacity and oxygen intake by more than 25%. Increase the oxygen supply to your muscle cells to burn more sugar, fat, increase ATP production for greater energy release and better muscle contraction for day in and day out strength. Power and endurance for sustained road cycling race performances. And so now when I'm thinking and teaching this to new athletes, I'm thinking largely in terms of, you know, zones that you want to be in. And there's roughly three types of zones. There's 101 is just 100% nasal breathing. Two is in your nose, out your mouth, in your nose, out your mouth, in your nose, out your mouth. And it's interesting. And so God, when I was in high school, I had a coach that talked a lot about breathing and I took it, you know, seriously, I, I did what he said, but I didn't really think about it too much. And so now after just doing tons of research, all these decades later, uh, this has been going back to high school that I've been thinking about breathing. You know, this is you know, decades of just thinking, uh, all about then, you know, you have one, you have in your nose, out your mouth, in your nose, out your mouth. And then just when you're at an all out effort, you're just trying to get as much air in as possible. Right. So let's look at these things. Okay. So one nose in, nose out for training zones. I'm a big proponent of training in zones. Uh, this is great for zones one, two, and three. In your nose, out your mouth. This is zones three, four, uh, and five, maybe, right? And then three, in your mouth, out your mouth, when all else fails, okay? So here's a great example of a workout. I love these progression workouts. Um, This idea originally actually came to me from a run coach, a very famous run coach called, uh, his name was Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels... um, Actually, uh, I had a girlfriend who actually was coached by Jack Daniels through college for four years. And um, he and she was even an au pair. She lived with him for a, a year. And, you know, when she was always training, she was always training in terms of progression for not always, but certain workouts. She was always training in progressions. And so we talked a lot about this. And so I started introducing these progressive, progressive workouts into my training plans. Um, and they work very well, but then, uh, turns out other cycling coaches do the same thing. So, you know, we, as cycling coaches, we, as you know, coaches, endurance coaches, we're not necessarily talking about all these workouts, but then when I started finding out, like other people started doing them well, it was, it was quite funny, but anyway, um, so, you know, here we go, uh, zone one. So this is, you know, one of the big things for this is, um, uh, when I'm in endurance, okay, there's a couple different things going on here. One, we want to just be breathing in and out your nose. And you can see right here, I'm pretty dedicated to this. This was a three hour, uh, zone two ride. And I really wanted to make sure that I was breathing in and in my nose, out my, uh, or in my nose, out my nose. And so for three uh, hours, it was like three and a half hours this day. I literally put this on. Uh, in winter base training, this is fantastic because, you know, you can wear something, uh, you know, uh, I'll often have one of those little scarves and I'll put that over my mouth for the entirety of my winter zone two training to really make sure that I'm dialed in breathing in my nose and out my out my nose. Okay. And so when you look at professionals in the Peloton right now, we have the Vuelta going on. You watch, you can tell what zones they are in by how they're breathing. So if they're breathing in and out their nose, you know, they're only riding zone two. If they're breathing in their nose, out their mouth, they're zone three or potentially zone four. And then obviously you can tell by their body movements if they're just in an all out race where they're breathing in and out their nose. But if they look like they're doing steady state and they're on the front and they're just breathing in and out their mouth, you know that they are full gas, right? And you know that that's not sustainable. The guy on the front leading the Peloton, if he's just breathing in his nose, out his mouth, that's a dangerous guy because that's tempo and he can lead the Peloton. Peloton at tempo. And that is a dangerous guy. All right. So let's look at that's zone one, right? In your nose, 
out your nose. All right. Here's like a zone two workout where we have some um, uh, tempo work now. Uh, I'm sorry, this is zone three workout where we have some tempo work. And we still might be able to get in zone two, uh, 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 in your nose, out your nose, in your nose, out your mouth, in your nose, out your nose. This is hard, people, please. And uh, this one is in your um, nose, out your mouth, all right? And then a zone three workout, you know, this is like an FTP test where, you know, you're looking at this interval, you start in your nose, uh, out your nose, that doesn't last very long, start out nasal breathing, really quick, you're, you know, in your nose, out your mouth, and then really quick, you're just dying for all the air that you can grab. So when you breathe, you want to um, breathe from your belly, and this is one of the things that I love about zone two, uh, especially just nasal breathing, it really emphasizes the diaphragm. And so when I'm looking around at people uh, in myself, um, uh, just don't not, we're not breathing correctly. We not have that. We're not using the full lung capacity. And when we do diaphragmic breathing, that's when we start bringing that out um, and making it work. Interestingly, um, the sympathetic nervous system is associated with the top of the lung and the parasympathetic nervous system is based is related to the bottom of the lung. The sympathetic is the flight or flight um, system. And we want to kind of stay out of that. We want to, you know, especially when we're in recovery, we want to get out of that. And that's why, like, you know, after a ride, get in some big, deep breaths to really push that parasympathetic system around. The parasympathetic nervous system is the system for um, rest and relax, right? Rest and recover. And when we're on the bike, we can even keep ourselves in a very parasympathetic system, keeping ourselves relaxed, keeping our body uh, using energy efficiently just by toning everything down, just being on a meditative state, basically on the bike through nasal breathing. Um, you, you, basically when you're on your bike, it's slow in breath, strong out breath. So you're, you're riding, you're right. And it's, it's kind of right. Even in, in my nostrils, right? So when I'm nasal breathing on the bike, I'm just relaxed, but, but when you're All right, get that. And then practice off the bike, uh, create the habit. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you're new to nasal breathing, go to the grocery store, you know, um, just breathe in and out your nose and really concentrate on it. Uh, again, I put the, the, the thing over my mouth uh, when I'm definitely on a zone two training ride or when I'm out um, on the bike in the winter. It's a great time just to make sure that you're dialing in your breathing. Uh, start with endurance, right? So when you start looking at these different zones of breathing, zone one, zone two, zone three, start with endurance and then work your way up, right? We won't, we don't want to cram for the exam. In this case, we want to just relax, take it, take it easy. And it's definitely something to focus and be aware on. Again, you can dramatically increase not only your daily mood, your daily life with breathing correctly, mostly nasal breathing, but you can definitely take your whatever endurance sport that you're in, you can definitely take that up a notch. All right. Hey, Coach Lee here. If you want to talk about breathing or anything else cycling related, please reach out. I would love to.